Hi, today we're going to talk about the parts of a laser cutter and things you should have around it for a safe and successful laser cutting experience. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And a little while ago, I did a video with my friend Patrick about things to consider when buying a laser cutter. Now, Patrick is the laser steward at my local makerspace, so he's a real expert. And there's been a lot of interest in that video and a lot of requests to do some more videos about laser cutters and how to maintain them. So this is episode two, the anatomy of a laser cutter. And we're going to talk about the parts of a laser cutter, some accessories to help you in cutting, um, safety equipment. We're also going to show the uh, rotary attachment, which is an attachment that allows you to engrave rounded surfaces. One comment about this video is it was shot on a Saturday in a very active maker space. The wood shop and the metal shop are right next door, so I've, I've done what I can to filter out that noise. So here is Patrick talking about the anatomy of a laser cutter. Tell me a little bit about the laser cutter you're standing next to here. So this is our this is our newest laser cutter here over at, at Nova Labs. It's a it's a maker space in uh, Western Virginia. Um, this one is particularly interesting just because it has such a big bed. It's uh, it's uh, basically a, a three foot by four foot bed, which is awesome. You know you can you can do so many things with it. Just the laser tube itself is an eighty watt nominal, hundred watt max uh, laser tube, which is. Uh, my kind of my preference for laser tubes. Um, they come. They there. There's ones that are smaller. There's ones that are larger. Um, I think once you get to the higher power laser tubes, you go to a hundred and you know, fifty watt or something like that. CO2 laser tube. Uh, it they um, they cost a lot more for one. <laughs> They're much more expensive, and they actually don't last as long. They they burn out faster. So uh, you know, you're, you're paying more money, and uh, you know the wearing out a little quicker. So um, we're going to see a close-up of the laser tube in a bit, but I see that there's one on the wall there behind you. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, our first one that burned out after about three years. Um, you got to figure we have 300 members here at our makerspace, and they're, they're, the lasers are constantly being used, and uh, so this one lasted three years, which is great. Yeah, if, uh, if a laser tube is, is being used eight hours a day in a commercial application, it'll like one like this will last about a year. Um, you know, in a kind of a makerspace environment where it's, you know, maybe not being used every hour of the day. Um, you know, the lasting three years is, is pretty typical. We're going to uh, talk about the parts of another laser here in the makerspace in a minute. But on this one, can you tell me a little bit about some of the accessories that you have around it um, that help us use the laser cutter? Yeah, sure. So the uh, so this laser cutter, just because the bed is so large, you know, you buy a smaller laser at your house, 40 watt one. Um, you might have to actually manually move the uh, the bed up and down. Uh, when the laser beam fires, it comes down to a point and then it flares back out again. So you want to adjust the the height of your material so that that focal point is either at the surface if you're doing engraving, or maybe halfway down into this into the piece if you're just cutting it. Um, so to, to raise and lower the bed, and this one is, is a simple, uh, there's, a, there's a motor system, you can just hit the buttons and raise the bed up and down. Um, we have these little focal tools that we've, we've made, and you can actually, uh, there's a little spot on the, on the head of the laser that you can mount it and actually adjust the, uh, the material up to the surface. So that focal tool you showed me is pretty small. Yeah, this one is. Um, so you have a choice when you when you buy a a laser cutter, or even you know, even after you buy, it, you can change them out. The, the actual uh, focal length lens that you use, um, typically, uh, you know, some people like to do thicker materials, some people do, like to do thinner materials. Um, this laser we've set up so you can do like really precise engraving, and you can do thinner materials just because the bed is so wide. Um, our second laser over there, we actually have a, a longer focal length lens. So you can do nice uh, thicker materials. A lot of people are doing um, cases, Pelican case foam. So they're cutting that nice foam inside of a Pelican case to make uh, something for their cameras and, and like you know ways to kind of hold and configure their tools. Um, we've also you know a lot of times people buy uh, plywood that they want to do stuff with, or they uh, you know they have something that's kind of lighter material that they may be doing some earrings or, or who knows a foam plane. Um, so we made these uh, magnetic clamps. 
Um, they're actually on Thingiverse. I'm sure you'll, you'll put up the link. But um, yeah, they're just uh, some magnets you can get off of Amazon, and then you just 3D print these out of PLA so that if they get uh, cut, it's no big deal. Um, so what it does is it basically it holds the, uh, the pieces down. It keeps them from moving around, but it also, sometimes when you buy plywood, it comes out a little warped or something, so you can kind of make sure it's nice and flat to the bed. Um, these, are, these are thin, so they actually will, the laser head will, will pass over them when it's traveling. Uh, I've seen some people use heavy weights and stuff like that, but you know, when, the, when the laser head is, is running by, it'll actually hit the weight and, and move it, um, just because the, the height is so high. So these are, these are a great little addition. All right, so uh, now we're back to our, our older laser cutter. We've had this one for about five years now. Um, it's originally made by Hurricane Laser, which is out of business, but it's really just a, your, your basic, you know, advanced Chinese laser cutter. Um, it's a 100 watt or 80 watt nominal, 100 watt max tube. Uh, it's very similar to the Rabbit laser I, I just talked about. Um, I just want to kind of get into, like, if you're setting up a laser at your house, I mean, even if you don't get one that's quite this size, you're going to have a lot of the same considerations. Um, you know, one thing is just having a fire extinguisher readily available. If you look up on the wall here, we have a dry chemical fire extinguisher. Uh, the reason you don't want to have like a CO2 fire extinguisher, which is probably, probably what you normally have at your house, is that when you hit it, um, lasers, the lenses and the mirrors get really hot. So if you had a fire, lift it up and, and hit it with the, fire, uh, the CO2 fire extinguisher, you'd crack all the mirrors and lenses. Um, so that's really not something that you want to do because they're somewhere between two and three hundred and fifty dollars to buy new ones. Um, I'll tell you that the other consideration is just having a vacuum cleaner standing nearby. Just get a small one. A lot of times when people are doing laser cutting, they're they're getting a whole bunch of small little parts and pieces everywhere that they want to, uh, you know, clean up afterwards and uh, sitting there and picking up all those little dots is is very painful. So just have a fire extinguisher. Uh, sorry. Uh, vacuum cleaner nearby to kind of quickly uh, pick that stuff up. Um, also, uh, you know, every laser cutter is different as far as the bed is concerned. Um, normally they have a mesh bed on, on the surface and then things that, uh, you know, small parts and pieces kind of drop through the bed. Um, some of them have a kind of a funnel type mechanism where it funnels down into a, a little drop tray down, you know, could be two or three feet below the laser. Um, some lasers like this one, um, there's just a flat metal bed about three inches below the, uh, the surface. You think of the laser beam, it comes down to a point, the focal point, and it kind of flares back out again. So that uh, that laser beam is, is basically going through that mesh bed and hitting whatever trash and, and droppings from the previous cuts that have been accumulating down there. So there's a potential that things could catch on fire. So it's really important to kind of lift that bed up and, and clean underneath it on a regular basis. Um, we do keep fire blankets uh, right nearby as well, so people can pull these, pull these out and just kind of douse the, the surface really quick, if it's, uh, if it's something like that. So that just having multiple options, just make sure that you keep those things, like a fire blanket, fire extinguisher, just readily nearby in case, uh, in case you need them. The ventilation for lasers come in basically two modes. Um, you know, we're lucky that we can actually just ventilate outside. Uh, that would be the preference, I would tell you. Um, is uh, we actually have a pretty intense system here. So as soon as you uh, turn the key and turn the laser on, there's a system of relays that actually turn a blower at the back of the laser on. It turns a blower up in the ceiling on, and it also turns a blower up on the roof on. So all three of them in a chain are, are sucking, sucking stuff right out of the space uh, really well. So that's great. Um, when you're at your house, maybe you'll be lucky and you'll be near a window. Um, uh, alternatively, they actually do sell units that are fairly pricey, maybe on half the price of a laser cutter, um, that uh, will actually allow you to do internal ventilation. So they'll actually filter out the air coming out of the laser cutter and uh, put it back into the space. Um, I would try to avoid that, but if you can't, um, that is definitely an option. Focal tools are interesting. So some laser cutters come with automatic ones. Uh, so the, basically you put the material in the bed, and the, the head will come over and it'll kind of press down on the material and kind of know where it is. Um, that just wasn't something we wanted to go with. We really, I think most of the people here at the, at the makerspace, they want to actually manually adjust that Z height um, for themselves. If you're doing an engrave operation, um, you obviously want it set right at the surface. Uh, a lot of times if you're cutting through something, you may want to have it a third or half the way down into the material. Uh, just to kind of cut it through. So this, this tool kind of allows you to uh, kind of do that manual measurement just to get it cut. 
it's longer than the one you showed us for rabbit because the focal length is longer. It is, yep, the focal length is a lot longer on, on this one. It, um, you know, that, that kind of helps us just do different types of uh, materials. Again, you can change it out very easily. It takes about five minutes to um, take the head apart, change out the lenses, and, uh, and go from there. All right, so there's a, uh, behind this panel here is a four foot long laser tube. It fires into the corner, there's a fixed mirror at an angle. When, uh, once it hits that mirror, it reflects over to a second mirror over here, and then it comes all the way across uh, and fires into this hole here. This, this is the actual, the last um, um, adjustment mirror that you have to do. And you can see there's all sorts of adjustment screws on these, on these lenses, and these, I'm sorry, these mirrors before it fires down into the lens here down at the tip of the, the head. Tell, tell me about what the head's attached to. Yeah, this, this gantry over here, as you can see, the, I think I can actually move it, the head will actually come back and forth, and uh, the gantry will actually slide back and forth as well. So that's how the, it gets the XY uh, motion inside of the, the laser cutter. Um, there's stepper motors that control all these different uh, aspects of its, of its motion, and they all go into a, uh, a controller uh, down, down inside the, the chassis. So this is our 80-watt uh, nominal, 100-watt max laser tube. Uh, typically when you buy them and they're shipped to you, the, the point of sale will actually do one last test right before they deliver it. So you get a certificate of conformity that actually tells you what the peak power is and that it's been tested recently. Um, there's a few things to kind of notice on here. You'll see some tubes coming in and out. Uh, there is a chiller unit down below that actually is going to pump cool water through the tube to keep everything cold. Um, chiller units come in two types, usually an active and a passive one. Um, on our rabbit laser, it, it, uh, we have an actual uh, a CW5000 unit, which is active. It actually cools the water. On this unit, it's a little bit older. We have a CW3000 unit, which just uh, is a passive cooler. Um, but uh, so you have to be a little bit more careful with this one if you're using it for you know extended long periods of the time. But typically we have a pretty good air conditioning system in, in the space, so the space is typically fairly cool, so it's not an issue. Um, so that's the laser tube itself. If you notice on here, there's a couple straps, and, uh, and underneath there, there's two mounting brackets to actually uh, make some adjustments. Um, typically, when you, when you set this up the first time, it's one of those things you set up and you don't ever have to touch again. Um, but that very first time, you do have to be pretty um, uh, detail-oriented and go through this whole process of making sure that the tube is, is uh, level you know, to the machine and that it's also not twisted um, so that it's firing the, into the center of the first uh, mirror. Uh, so, Patrick, tell me about the rotary attachment. Sure, you know, so there's, there's actually two different types of rotary attachments that you can get. Um, this one is, is the kind where you basically, it sits on rollers, and, um, and, and I'll talk more about this one. There's also a second type that uh, is, is more of a clamp type rotary attachment, where the, actual, the, the two ends will actually grab onto that piece, and, uh, and it's a little more fixed. Um, typically, I'll say if you're, just, if you're gonna have to pick between the one of the two of them, I would choose the roller type one. Um, what's nice about this one is, you know, you can just, you can grab a wine glass, a baseball bat, a roller pin, or, or even a, um, you know, nice glass for doing a, a base or something like that. And you can just, uh, basically, you can put it on here, and there's an active end and a passive end. Uh, the passive end actually has a, a way to raise and lower it, um, so you can kind of get the, the, the object to be flat. You know, not all things come out as a cylinder. A lot of times you have a, a tapered uh, wine glass or a tapered beer stein or something, so you're going to have to adjust the tail stock to kind of get your surface um, flat. Um, it's re these are really great. Uh, what you do in a, in a rotary attachment is you're disconnecting the gantry, and um, you're basically plugging that uh, rotary tool into the gantry uh, controller. And you have to usually you have to go into the actual software of your laser cutter. And redo the firmware that's that's sitting inside of the uh, laser cutter to tell it now it's in rotary mode. Now you have it sitting there, but in, if it was actually if we were actually going to do this, you would pull out the bed it's sitting on, right? Yeah. The, well, you don't actually have to. Um, but really, what you need to do is lower the entire bed a ton, uh, so that the uh, these beds typically go down about a foot or maybe 14 inches or something. So you have a huge uh, depth thing that you can do there. So in this case, uh, typically I do remove the beds uh, for both of these, and then I lower the, the entire uh, 
you know, down about you know a foot or so. So it's so the laser clears the glass. Clears the glass. Yeah, absolutely. Part of the reason why I like this this roller tube uh, setup so much is that uh, once you have everything set up for one wine glass and you've got it all configured, so you have the the, the tail height. You've got everything set up as far as the distance, and you can kind of see on here these these tail stocks will slide back and forth. Um, but once you have all that set up, the nice part is that if you're doing like a dozen glasses, you can just sit here. You hit go on the laser. It, it cuts everything out. puts a nice engraving on the surface. You pull the glass off. You take the fresh one. You sit it down there. You close the door of the laser. You hit go, and you just keep knocking them out one at a time. And um, you can't do that with the clamp style because you've got to mount it on mount it each time. So this is, uh, this is why the people really prefer the, uh, the roller type. So I hope that quick tour of a laser cutter and its environment was helpful to you. We are going to do another episode talking about how to maintain a laser cutter. If that's interesting to you, please subscribe to my channel.